United States consumes more oil than any other country on Earth. We rely on foreign countries like Saudi Arabia, Canada, and Mexico for oil. In 2007, the U.S. was averaging a consumption rate of 21 million barrels of gas a day. In second place was China with 6.9 million and Japan at 5.4 million. Some companies have gone for a greener method. For example, Toyota started the hybrid revolution with the famous Prius. Sure, these things will use less oil, but is it a permanent fix for a growing problem? The world uses oil every day. But what's next? We must change our ways. Did you know items found in your kitchen could be used to power your diesel car? This peanut oil, for example. With a few chemical reactions, you could be using it as gas. Biodiesel is simple enough to make that you could actually make it at your house and provide your own fuel for your diesel car. All you need is vegetable oil, or another oil like canola or corn oil, sodium hydroxide, and methanol. Here's what happens that causes the chemical reactions that will give you fuel out of these simple items. Fats and oils are made up of triglycerides. Triglycerides are an ester. A triglyceride has an alcohol, which is bonded to three fatty acids. In the process of creating biodiesel, triglycerides are broken, ingredients added, and esters form. Transesterification is the process that turns triglycerides into biodiesel. Here's how transesterification works. The methanol molecules are present, as well as a catalyst. The catalyst will break the bonds between the glycerin and the three fatty acids. The methanol then bonds to the fatty acids and forms a biodiesel. A crude glycerin is also formed in the process. There are different blends of biodiesel. There is B100, which is biodiesel in its purest form. Then there are more common blends, such as B2, B5, and B20. B2 being 2% biodiesel in the same concept for the other blends. The advantages to all the blends are they can be used in most diesel engines, they are biodegradable and safer to handle. There are some disadvantages though. Blends above B5 are not yet warranted by automakers. There is also a lower power for high blends like B100. Sure, biodiesel sounds great, but what's the costs? If you have a new diesel car, there is no cost for modifications because no modifications are required. Biodiesel works in diesel engines the same way diesel does. Biodiesel can cost a little more than normal diesel though. If a biodiesel is blended at a 20% level with petroleum diesel, it costs about 20 cents more per gallon than diesel alone. The biodiesel helps save money in the long run though. Studies have shown fleets using this 20% biodiesel blend would experience lower total annual costs than other fuels. The University of Georgia have results showing biodiesel powered buses are competitive with other alternatively fueled buses. Congress has also placed a number of tax incentive programs to help the biodiesel industry. These programs include the Volumetric Blender Tax Credit, Agri-Biodiesel agri Producer Tax Credit, and Alternative Fuel Refueling Infrastructure, uh, infrastructure Tax Credit. The co-products to biodiesel are also helpful. Glycerol, the co-product to biodiesel, can be used in cattle diet. Therefore, it can be sold and used by farmers who raise cattle. To understand this, we must first understand how a diesel engine works. The basic combustion engine is powered by a series of explosions or combustions. In a standard gasoline engine, the fuel is mixed with air. The mixture is then put into a cylinder with a piston. The mixture is compressed up to a point when an explosion occurs due to this high pressure. This combustion pushes the piston downwards. The piston is connected to a crankshaft. The crankshaft finally rotates the wheels and moves the car. Here's a more three-dimensional view. The main difference between gasoline and diesel engines is the way the fuel is handled. With diesel engines, the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder instead of being mixed with the air originally. This is what allows you to use alternative fuels. The 
basic diesel engine needs no modifications in order to use biodiesel. However, some owners of old vehicles have run into problems with certain biofuels clogging the engine, but this generally is not a big problem to worry about. I would only urge that you check the engine frequently in the first few months of the use of biofuels. We also need to look at how this will affect the environment in the long run. Before the world gets too excited and jumps into this new idea of biofuels, we need to look at how this will actually affect the environment. Biodiesel will reduce CO2 emissions by about 78% compared to standard oil. Plants that are produced for biofuels will take in the carbon dioxide released from its use. They will then be used for more biodiesel. It's a continuous cycle. Biodiesel has even been proven to have fewer health risks than diesel. However, would the world be able to keep up if biodiesel was the new standard? Crops such as corn and soybeans would have a higher demand so that they can be made into fuel. The price would then skyrocket for the actual food. The actual farming of these crops also has negative effects on the environment. Sure, biofuels are better for the environment than petroleum, but only in small amounts. So, you may be wondering if there are any negatives to using biodiesel. Unfortunately, every great idea has its faults. It may not work with older cars simply because of the engine, but this problem can be eliminated with the use of a converter. It doesn't stay good in storage for long periods of time because it breaks itself down. It's known to cause a variety of engine performance problems. The use of biodiesel is limited because of geographic problems. It doesn't work well in extreme temperatures. It must be free of all foreign material, and lastly, it will dissolve rubber and some plastics, remove paint, oxidize aluminum and other metals, and it has been reported to destroy asphalt and concrete if spills are not cleaned quickly. Basically, it would be smart to keep the stuff off of the items you care about. Useful co-products of biodiesel production are glycerin. Right now, it is a major product that has a low market value. One important factor to keep in mind is while biodiesel is a possible alternative fuel source to oil, the mainstreaming of biodiesel fuel would negatively impact the environment on several levels. It will create the need for far more farmland in order to produce the amount of biomass to produce biodiesel. While farmland is green, it is not the kind of natural environment which supports a biodiversity of life. Currently, there is already a lot of concerns of the spreading of farmland being a threat to the rainforests and other delicate e ecospheres. Adding a demand for biodiesel would be trading the earth for air. Another important factor is that biodiesel can go bad in your fuel tank just as it does in storage. A perishable fuel source means that people will either have to drive more often, fill up more often, or change the way transportation is used altogether. A thing to remember is as the world's supply of oil fades, Alternative fuel sources are being considered to replace oil as the dom dominant fuel source. Biodiesel is an oil extracted from the biomass of dead organic matter. This has been proposed as a possible replacement. Of all alternative fuel sources, biodiesel may well be the least expensive to produce, with much of the technology already available today. There are good reasons to consider passing on biodiesel. Another good question is, how do we get biodiesel or how do we increase availability? Currently, biodiesel is not efficient enough to run the tanker trucks to tr transport it to remote locations. This, along with reduced fuel economy, means that mainstreaming biodiesel can at best be only a partial solution as an alternative oil. There are cars available to buy that are biodiesel ready, but they are pretty pricey and possibly dangerous because it damages rubber hosing and that in return can shorten your engine life. If you have the money to purchase one of these cars, where would you get the biodiesel from? Consumers have more options than ever when it comes to using alternative fuels. Many gas stations now make biodiesel pumps available. In fact, some cities like Las Vegas, Austin, and Greenville have more than a dozen biodiesel pumps. If you want to find some located near you, you can check the internet to find where local biodiesel pumps are. If you have a diesel vehicle and a public pump nearby, using biodiesel is a breeze. So what are we doing with this newly found fuel? How are we going to use it? We believe that after the negatives are neutralized, the Rockdale County school buses could run entirely on biodiesel, or at least blends of biodiesel. 
This may seem like a bit of a stretch, but it will pay off in the long run. We will first settle some of these negatives mentioned earlier. Some vehicles may not run. Of course, the buses will most likely work with biodiesel as most diesel engines do, but if not, they can be converted. Biodiesel can break down over time. This isn't an issue because the fuel would be in constant motion as the county would use it every school day. The performance isn't perfect. Buses aren't performance vehicles to start out with. Our area is perfect for the use of biodiesel. We have pumps within 45 minutes away. Conyers doesn't suffer from extreme temperatures, so that problem is eliminated. If the county got its fuel from a plant, it would most likely be clean. Foreign materials are really only a problem in homemade batches. Lastly, it can tear down materials over time. This also is not a problem because the fuel would not sit for long periods of time. So finally, you have the facts. Biodiesel is an option that is ideal for Rockdale County. It would make the county look good as well as use less fossil fuels. Biodiesel may not be the future for all, but it is for Rockdale County.